Hello everybody, this is Emoth. Welcome back to Let's Play Back to the Future the Game. We're gonna speak to Emoth. Don't worry, Emmett. I'm sure you'll get it right someday. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Right now I'm more concerned with Einstein. Hmm. What's up with you and Edna? A couple months ago, I could swear she was making goo-goo eyes at you. That was before my father had her stay sober society meeting thrown out of our house. Now she takes every opportunity she can get to snipe at me and my work. It's very distracting. <laughs> Alright. Um... You know anything about Trixie Trotter? The songbird of the Sierras? The nightingale of the north? The floozy of the foothills? Uh... Never heard of her. And I've definitely never snuck into Tannen's speakeasy to listen to her. All right. Uh, okay. Well, I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Einie off that ledge. Yeah, so I need some hints. Ah. Okay. So we have to speak to the old doc. Hmm, I don't know why this is so, um... Hey doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Hmm. Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never have the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter, those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes! Right now, <laughs> my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now the rockets are a horrible idea and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Awesome. Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the expo. Doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. <laughs> All right. Um. Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted, and I'll handle the rest. Okie dokie. Okay, I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. So that's what we're doing, huh? Distracting younger Doc Brown. I guess that's okay. Any luck with Einstein? I'm still thinking about it. It's a perplexing spatial conundrum, aggravated by Aini's understandable skittishness. Why don't you take a break from Einstein Patrol for a minute? Maybe go see a movie or something. Thanks for the offer, Mike. But once Emmett Lathrop Brown sets his mind on a task, nothing can distract him from his purpose. Lathrop. Right now, that purpose is rescuing your dog. Lathrop. Have you seen that Frankenstein movie yet? I hear it's pretty inspirational. Not yet. I've been so busy with my rocket car that I haven't found the time. But I'm planning on going tonight. At least I will once I get Einstein down. Okay, so we need to get Einstein well, down somehow. I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Einie off that ledge. What should we do? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we need to get someone or something. Let's see. Okay. Okay. But I don't see why it's lagging so much for me. Uh, game is lagging like 
I don't know why. Guess it's not my computer. I don't know it's my com. Hey, Edna. whatever. Mr. Crockett, what can I do for you? Let's see. What's going on with you and Emmett? The last time I saw you, you seemed to be kind of interested in him. That was before I belatedly realized that his agreement to host my Stay Sober Society was a clever ruse to ferry barrels of hooch to his so-called laboratory. Sorry about that. Now his very presence fills me with an irrepressible urge to pick at his philosophical and intellectual foundations with every tool in my vocabulary. So you're not dating? Dating? <laughs> the mere thought of romantic involvement with that undisciplined techno-anarchist is preposterous. Good. Okay, let's see. Um... Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Brown. Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run... Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. And I'm sure my editor will agree. This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear and present danger to public safety. You know what represents a clear and present danger to public safety? Your singing voice. There's no need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. Flying cars of all the ridiculous juvenile You mock me, but just imagine. A world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. Well, I might be more inclined to listen to you if your maiden voyage hadn't ended in a crash on one roof and a stranded dog on another. I'm working on getting him down. I need. how'd you get down? Clever dog. Well... Fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Now, how to get that rocket car back down? Yeah, alright. Now you got all the tools you need to sniff out Arthur, right? Okay. Einstein! Here, boy! Here, boy! Fight. Hey boy, take a whip of this. Clever dog. You gotta love that nose. Yep. I've been laying low, officer, but I've gotta go to the pictures once in a while. Hello, Arthur. Officer? I'll take it from here. But, but... We can talk of the Majestic, away from prying eyes. Yeah, Einstein. You done good. Yep. He's done good. So what do we do now? We get back to... If Trixie and Arthur are to meet, they'll need both. Okay. So what do we do now? I think we should move to the, uh... Speakeasy again. But where is the Speakeasy? I know where it is. I just... Running, 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 no, 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 come on. All right. Okay. Hopefully we don't need to do this thing again. We can just go on. Welcome back, sir. Yep, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to do that thing again. What's it gonna take to get Trixie to squeal on a kid? Yeah, that's... Huh. Let's see if we need to speak to Miss Trixie Trotter. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? I found Arthur. He's staying at the Majestic Arms. That flea bag? He's too classy for that. Yeah, well, anyway, 
you want to pop over there right now and talk to him about this evidence you got. I can't take more than a five minute break. Get him to come here. I'm not sure he'd find this place inviting. Then I guess he might say we're stuck at an impasse. Oh, okay. Break a leg out there. Thanks. So this is not the place I want to be, I guess. I was wrong about this. That was a waste of time. Though we did talk to Trixie for a few seconds. You can't run in a back alley. Come on. Thank you. Let's go to the uh, Majestic. I have to go, go through the park again. Oh, there he is. Doop, doop. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Is Artie still here? He's in the bathroom. Hey, Artie, open up. You've got a gangster to bring down. Is it time for me to meet this Sylvia? No, it's time for you to meet Trixie. Trixie says she's got something that might be able to send Kid up the river, but that you're the only one she trusts to check it out. Me? What is she? Oh, I know what she's done. Clever. Care to let us in on the secret? Sorry, guys, but if Trixie's keeping it a secret, then so am I. That's all well and good, Mr. McFly, but if you and Trixie are going to collaborate on this evidence, we'll need to arrange a rendezvous. Well, Trixie's chained to kids speakeasy. So <laughs> we'll have to bring Arthur to Trixie. Uh-uh. No way am I getting anywhere near that place again. I don't know how you talked me into this. Just stay back here in the <laughs> shadows and don't come out until you see Trixie. You're sure I'll be safe here? Perfectly safe. We'd never make you take any unnecessary... <gasps> Sagan. Where's Kid? Uh-oh. Gotta do something. Don't worry. Gotta do something. Yes. Welcome back, sir. What's it gonna take to get Trixie to squeal on Kid? Hey, you've said that before. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay, Marty. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? Guess who's waiting in the alley to talk with you? Buddy? The one and only. It wasn't easy to track him down. I had Come to... Come up for me, cue ball. I'm taking a smoke break. Atta girl. Atta girl. Attaboy, girl. Hey, you! Huh? Yeah, jerk. I saw you making eyes at my unit. Sorry, pal. I don't have time for a fight. Why, you? I'll never get to Carnegie Hall at this rate. All <laughs> right, fella. I think you're done for tonight. Hey, He's done for Where do you think you're going? Me? Yeah, you. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing. I... Ah! What the wolf's that? Trixie? Break silver cue ball. Whatever you say, babe. Hmm. What was that? Yeah, what was that? We need to find out what that was. Blood? Artie? <laughs> you missed a hell of a party, buddy. Kid! What happened? Oh, you're gonna love this. So, I'm hanging out in the club when all of a sudden I get an urge to drain the lizard, right? 
I come out into the alley, and who do I see? None other than that scrawny, subpoena-answering rat, Artie McFly. And get this! The little worms whisper in a way I'll conquistadorial like with my Trixie! Oh, no. Naturally, I pull out Kid Jr. and prepare to put a couple bullets in McFly's head. Which causes Artie's nose to stop bleeding because he's a big wuss. And then... <laughs> and then... <laughs> what? Trixie literally gets down on her knees and begs me to let him live! <laughs> huh? What? Seriously, down on her knees crying and begging for McFly's life! So, uh, what did you do? What could I do? I fired two shots in the air and told Artie to take a hike. Oh, that was merciful. Hey, I got plenty of mercy. Besides, now Trixie owes me big time. And Kid Tannen always collects on his debts. Always. Okay. I guess we'll end it here and we'll go look for Arden next time. So thank you for watching and goodbye for now. And it's good to be back with Back to the Future. Bye.